Visit the ancient Americas where lost civilizations reshaped the face of the earth into magnificent cities hundreds of years before Columbus, then vanished from history. When the settlers of the 16 and 1700s began pushing inland across North America, they came across many strange earthen structures. High cone-shaped mounds, long ridges, huge flat-topped pyramids dotted and rippled across the landscape. Inside these mounds, unusual pottery and ornate artifacts were often found next to human remains of an ancient people that vanished long ago. For over 2,000 years, ancient peoples left their marks throughout the eastern half of the country, referred to as the woodlands. Hundreds of sites containing thousands of earthworks were discovered. Looking at this undertaking in its entirety, it is clear that the labors of the North American mound builders were of such magnitude that these structures are one of the great accomplishments of early mankind. The first Europeans to explore North America came across huge earthworks, mounds which excited their curiosity and their greed for the treasures that might be found inside them. Early excavations uncovered an extraordinary amount of beautifully crafted pottery and artifacts. Many showed sophisticated workmanship and were evidence of elaborate trading networks that brought goods from as far off as the Rocky Mountains and the Gulf of Mexico, a distance of more than a thousand miles. A number of the ancient graves that were excavated revealed elaborate burial practices. This all seemed far too exotic to be indigenous to the New World. Attempting to make sense of these baffling earthen structures, later visitors to North America refused to accept that they were the work of ancient Indians. To them, the finds were evidence that a more sophisticated culture had once thrived there. Not only did the current lifestyle of the Indians seem unrelated, but the Indians themselves seemed unaware of who had built the mounds. Anxious for a solution, Americans at the time came up with other explanations. The earliest interpretations of the people who built the mounds was that they couldn't have been Native Americans. They had to have been uh, constructed by someone coming in from somewhere else, whether they were lost Welch tribes or lost children of Israel or Maya from South America or something like that. But in fact, they do appear to be, and there's no evidence to suggest that they're not purely indigenous. The people who were living here at the time constructed them. Even the lost continent of Atlantis was included in these lost race theories. The ideas presented not only seemed exciting and magical, but were probably promoted to increase the value of the artifacts by those plundering the mounds for profit. These theories also gained support from the racist notion that Indians were not sufficiently civilized or ambitious to have been responsible for such feats. When these lost civilization explanations lost credibility, another rose to replace it. The mounds were natural geological features formed through unusual erosion. Believers pointed out that America was filled with other spectacular and unique natural landforms. The artifacts were often explained as coming from tribes that lived on these natural landforms at different times. Part of the problem, of course, was that the science of archaeology was in its infancy. Other tribes had indeed inhabited the sites both before and after the era of mound construction. But without modern dating techniques and a total understanding of population densities, the confusion is understandable. It is hard to believe how the largest ancient structures in North America could ever have been misinterpreted as geological forms, even though hundreds of years of weather and vegetation had obscured them.